Welcome back to another Trade Alts tutorial. This is Trading Bots number eight. How about that? We're going to talk about leverage trading, how you implement leverage into your trading bots, and we're going to talk about short bots. I know that's been one topic that a lot of people have been asking about as well. So we're definitely going to get into that. I got a really good video for you tonight. Let's get to it. And as usual, there is a disclaimer. Please pause your video and read it thoroughly. All contents for entertainment and educational purposes only. Nothing's financial advice. And past performance is no guarantee of future results. So for those of you who've been following along since video one, can you believe it? Uh, this is video number eight. And I started, um, I actually uploaded the first video in the series exactly a month ago. So we have done, this is video number eight in a month's time. Pretty impressed, I must say. But I wanted to go over the profit that I've kind of made so far. Just to, again, I like to update everybody just to kind of give you an idea of where I'm currently sitting. So on January 29th, again, this is straight from video one, so you can go back and check it. But on January 29th, I had hit the $30,000 profit mark. So this is, this again is a screenshot of something that I shared on Facebook to some of my friends um, just to kind of show them what's going on with trading bots. And then obviously from video number one on February 28th, this was my screenshot at that time. So I was at $44,769 in total profit. So I'm going to show you where I am at today exactly a month later. So here's three commas. I will refresh it just for you just so we know we're getting the latest and greatest statistics so here we go overall stats total profit for today fifty dollars and 74 cents my day started about um or this current new day started five hours ago um at daily uh daily open and the total fifty four thousand five hundred eighty one dollars in total profit so almost ten thousand dollars in profit over the last 30 days since i made trading bot video number one so i just wanted to give you an update again Pretty proud of those results. I think anybody would be happy with making, you know, having your profit increase $10,000 in a month. Um, and just to give you the same update that I gave you in Trading Bot Video 1, I am still using approximately 30, I think I'm at like $32,000 is what I have allocated for my Trading Bot. So I haven't really changed that since Video 1. Um, but again, you know, not, not too bad. Pretty happy about that. So on to short bots. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one. Obviously, like I want to make very clear that you, you know, you should have experience in, you know, with technical analysis, you should understand like the market that you're in, because this can play a really big role in whether you're profitable or not. So again, this, this, this section comes with the disclaimer as usual, but please like make sure that you do your own research. Okay. So when do you use short bots? Like when's a good time? So obviously bearish markets are good times to be using short bots so right now are we in a bearish market absolutely not like we are in a very bullish market therefore you know every single one of my trading bots and again this is just what i'm doing okay but every single one of my bots is running long like every single bot is looking for long trades and it's for the simple fact that we are in a very bullish overall market. Like we are macro bullish right now. There's no reason, you know, in my mind that I would really want to entertain having short bots. Now, that being said, moving on to the second kind of bullet point here, custom strategies. I just covered this last video, video seven, which I uploaded yesterday. So it's certainly possible to incorporate short bots in any market. I want to be clear, like I take short trades all the time. But they're like, you know, they're usually scalp trades or, you know, intraday type trading. Like I don't necessarily hold. And again, this is just what I'm doing. But considering the overall market trend that we're in at this current time, you know, the video being shot, I'm hesitant to hold like, you know, long term swing short positions because it's simply due to the type of market that we're in. Like, I don't think it's a good idea. That's just what I'm doing. But you know, if you're comfortable with the risk and you have a background in trading, you can certainly use, you know, on TradingView, you have the custom uh, the custom signals, like I said, went over in video seven. Um, if you have indicators there that you want to create alerts for, for your trading bots, certainly possible to do that. I don't want to like discourage people from 
not you know from not using short bots or whatever but i just like it's just important to be very cautious with it if you are not if you don't have a lot of experience so another another time that you could use a short bot is when you have an overextended move and you see the caution bar there like again you see the types of moves that a lot of altcoins have had you know you can think of um you know quite a few altcoins recently that have really big big moves to the upside now a lot of times depending how that move happens right like if you have a huge candle like you know within a day you have a huge daily candle and it looks really overextended again if you have your other indicators that are telling you for that particular altcoin like the it looks probable that it's going to retrace then maybe you could turn on a short bot and try to catch that downside that you think is coming right but again you have to be careful with the, with those types of things so um, but again, if you're looking for that retracement, maybe a good time to turn your short bot on and see if you can catch that move. Another time that you could do this, and this is like kind of getting advanced, I would say. Um, but I'm going to be covering funding rates later on in the video, but maybe taking advantage of funding rates. So let's say if you're trading futures, for example, and there's a very high funding rate that if you're sitting, like if you were a short, right you would be getting paid to sit in that short position if the funding rate is incredibly high then maybe it you could use that to your advantage to run a short bot to to essentially get paid that funding rate which will help kind of reduce your risk in that essence okay now again this is like definitely more in of an advanced you know way to potentially use a short bot again i'd, I'd hope that you would be you know, experience enough to understand what I'm talking about and how like you could possibly apply that. But again, this is another one of those things. Know the kind of market that you're in and make sure you take all of the information into account. Right. But again, if you have a funding rate that is incredibly high and, you know, maybe you could be getting paid some nice funding to sit in that position, even if it's slightly underwater, maybe it's worth doing. So that's something to, to look at. Now I want to take a live look at the chart. So I want to show you an example on Bitcoin and to talk like to give you a better idea of what I mean by the types of markets, right? So at the top, you see bearish market. It's kind of where we started. I want to show you what a bearish market looks like. That way, you know what structure to look for in the charts. And then I will show you the current structure that we are in and how completely opposite it is and why using short bots could be, you know, unless it's your, your experience and unless you have that maybe a custom strategy or anything I already discussed why you should be careful if you want to use short bots. So here is the Bitcoin chart on Coinbase. And I'm using Coinbase because it has longer price action history than the Bybit chart that I typically trade off of. But this is Bitcoin. This is what you're looking at. And again, this is the Ichimoku indicator. I'm going to be doing an entire series on this. But I really like leaving this on here because it helps you see how bullish this trend has been right so this is a very easy way to look and tell you instantly in two seconds that we are in a very bullish trend all right and look at this move from you know when you're sitting here at nine thousand. i mean you can even go back like this this right here look how crazy this is like this is your coronavirus march 2020 crash that we had right where bitcoin went all the way down to 3k look at what it has done since incredible move just off of this 3K low to your current all-time high, that's a 1,500% move to the upside, okay? And this is one thing that I want to hammer out right now when you're talking about short bots. So first of all, shorting in this kind of environment is very dangerous because, and obviously, like, there's, you know, there's plenty of, of opportunities within this price action, Okay, so let me get rid of this, but just keep that in mind. 1,500% move to the upside. But there's plenty of opportunities to take a short here, for example. Like, obviously, you got a really nice move to the downside. Here, another really nice move to the downside. It's your current all-time high, another pretty nice move to the downside. But again, this is all, you know, in my previous Bitcoin analysis video, when I focus on higher-term time frames, I show you that getting 20 to 30 percent even 40 percent pullbacks in you know previous market cycles like this is a completely normal thing and it's expected okay but as far as like if you were to set a dca bot and like this is kind of the reason why i like say to tread caution right 
you look at my style of bots that I that I've been using, the dollar cost average DCA bots that I've been talking about this whole time, right? If you were to try to run that but short, you likely would have been you would have been in a lot of trouble, is my guess. Like just by looking at these moves. Okay. So like for here, for instance. All right. So let's say like you took a short up here. You know, or you ran your short bot and you got, you know, 31% move to the downside. Like that's great. But what happens if you're still in your short bot here and then this move happens? Right? Check this out. Just from this wick low here. Maybe you know you started filling your entries again, you closed the deal, whatever, got started filling your entries. And then this happens to you. Look at that. That's a hundred percent move to the upside in a span of a few weeks. So what's that gonna do to your bot? I don't know. You know, like <laughs> so one thing that I want to hammer out is that you can have an infinite move to the upside, especially when you have these crazy bullish cycles that Bitcoin likes to have. You can have really an infinite move to the upside, but to the downside, and this again, this is why I also like long bots, the long DCA bots in this environment, is because with my settings, so let's say again, you know, the a lot of the the majority of my bots have like the 60% setting, right? So it has 30 safety orders and the standard or the safety order deviation is 2%, giving you a 60% downside kind of window. So what does that look like on Bitcoin? Well, that would mean price would be coming back down to about $24,000. So I have this much leeway, assuming this is how my Bitcoin bot was working. I'm just using this as, as an example. But to the downside, right? Bitcoin would have to go all the way down to 25K with no relief bounce to get me out of my trade, right? But it would have to go all the way down to 25K to fill up my safety orders. So that I would argue is a bit harder Right, I would feel better about that risk myself versus running a short bot and having this happen to you. So again, your your bot, you know, you're probably getting wrecked this entire way up. So, but again, let's pretend that you you're really good and you started your your short bot here and you caught this move. So you're probably feeling pretty good, right? But then this happens to you. How do you manage that? Right? Like, so what is your safety order deviation? Like, because it's not going to be the same as, you know, what you would probably use for your long bot. So that's like what I want to hammer home is that you you can have an infinite move to the upside, but to the downside, it's a hunt. Like, it's literally Bitcoin can can go, you know, minus 100% or whatever, right? Like, it can only get so bad. And that's like, I mean, that's a terrible thing to really say, but I'm just proving a point that you know when you're when you're measuring your risk to the downside like this and you're you're laddering in orders that's different than doing it in reverse okay so that's different than doing it in reverse so you saw what 90 percent looked like there well guess what here's 90 percent here right but it can go up to who knows what right like that's my point this is just quite a bit more risk that way. So you, you know, as far as your parameters go, what you would use for your settings, it's likely going to be different if you are trying to do the TCA bot, right? Which I would say is like, that's kind of scary. But like, if you have that particular strategy, if you have the indicator, right? That you want to use the, you want to use trading view to send you the signal like that is, is a bit different because like, uh, hopefully, you know, you would have stop losses built into your, trading and whatnot that could you know mitigate some of that risk so anyway back to what i was talking about this obviously is a bear bear or i'm sorry a very bullish market structure right looks great very bullish and um but now let's take you back so this is 2019 right so this is 2019 like this is bearish so this is a better environment, okay? Let me turn Ichimoku off because it looks a little messy, but this just shows you like this is a better environment to run a short bot, I would argue. Like this is kind of the environment that you would want to see, you know, overall price has been making its way lower, right? Over time, this is a better environment for a short bot. It's the same thing back here. 
you have your 2017 high 20 you know the twenty thousand dollar high that was a high for a long time now look at this ever since this kind of blow off top that we had in 2017 look at price action since then this is short bought territory like this is a better place in my opinion now obviously you still have these kind of run-ups though you still have these run-ups that you have to contend with right but i would argue overall this is a better environment to be trading short in and the thing is you look at how long these cycles are right you look at how long i mean this was this whole piece of price action here right this took a few years to iron out so my point is like you don't have to necessarily try to time the exact top of of when you know okay now i need to switch my bot short or whatever like that's not it the point is though you you're likely going to be able to see like when things start to turn around right now as we currently sit we are very bullish i would argue okay you're going to likely have some time to see things switch over now again if you don't catch the very top no like really only a only a handful of people are going to actually catch the very top right let's be real about that but the thing is when things do end up reversing like you should in theory have a fair amount of time to make the adjustment right like you should be able to recognize that hey like there's a, you know the trend is changing um you know there's a change of behavior overall like this looks like this could be you know like we could be switching gears here and then there are things that you can do to adjust your bot settings to accommodate for the new environment right and like that right here is going to be a video in itself and i had thought about like i thought about when i'm going to be doing that um uh oh nice usb i don't know hopefully hopefully it doesn't mess up my uh hopefully it doesn't mess up this video but anyway um, I thought about when I was going to be doing that video and, you know, if I'm going to do it now, but I honestly think that I'm going to wait to do that particular video when the market actually starts to turn around when I think that is anyway. So I'm probably going to reserve that video for what I hope is a long time in the future, right? I hope we have a lot of legs left in this bull run because, you know, obviously, you know, as the number goes up, everybody gets happier, right? But I'm going to likely save that video for some time in the future when I do start to make those changes to my bots, because maybe I, you know, I myself see some change in the market that says, hey, like maybe it's a good time to kind of switch gears a bit. All right. So now we are going to create a short bot. So I'm going to show you this, you know, this again, the settings are going to be basically the same as before, but I'm going to walk you through a few, you know, just a couple different things just so that we have another kind of opportunity to create a bot. Okay, so we are back at three commas. This is kind of your main dashboard. So I'm going to click on create bot because we are going to create a short bot. And there is a few different things that you need to be aware of when you're creating a short bot. So I'm going to do a Bitcoin bot since that's kind of what we've been talking about. Just use Binance, that's fine. For the pair, again, BTC, USDT. Now the difference when you are when you have a short bot is that you need to have the other side of the pair in your wallet. So in every previous video and example that I've done so far, if you're trading Bitcoin USDT, you need USDT in your wallet, right? Or you need dollars in your wallet to trade BTC USD. And then when you take profit, again, you can pick and choose, you know, if you want to keep profit in USDT or you want to keep profit in Bitcoin, completely up to you. The difference of trading short is you need the other side of the pair in your wallet now. So if you want to short Bitcoin USDT, you need Bitcoin in your wallet now, not USDT. So that is a big difference, obviously, but um, you need Bitcoin in your wallet and you're going to be using that to trade from to accrue either more bitcoin or more usdt okay so how you do this is it's the same thing you set it up exactly the same your strategy though is going to be short and your profit currency 
You can pick and choose whichever one that you would like. Your base order size, safety order size, completely up to you. I'm just gonna just do a very simple 10 and 20. Like this is like the lowest one that I typically use. Start order type, limit, deal start condition. You can drop down and see all these different deal start conditions if you wanna check them out. Again, I always use open new trade ASAP because I prefer my bots to always be in a trade as much as possible. You can use trading view custom signal here. If you watch video seven and you wanna try out your custom trading view signals, like this is the one that you would use, but I'm just gonna select open new trade ASAP. Take profit, completely up to you, you know? And again, this is kind of redundant from previous videos, but I'm just gonna keep it the same. So I just take 1.5. Stop loss, up to you if you wanna incorporate that into your strategy, considering that this is a short bot. Trailing. You know, so trading, I got a question over in Discord earlier today asking like what a good trailing deviation percentage is. And again, this is kind of one of those things that you need to test on your own. And I would say like the larger trailing deviation you have. So let's say that you wanted to change this to 0 0.5. If you have a larger trailing deviation, I would, I would say that there's more risk involved because that's a wider deviation, right? So you're giving price a wider berth to either go up or go down. And if it decides to go down, right? And I'm assuming, and I'm, I'm referring to long bots now, okay? But if price happens to go down, then you could not make as much profit, right? So that's, you know, trailing deviation is one of those things you need to test on your own. But for this purpose and what I've been testing myself, I'll just use 0 0.25. And again, you don't even have to do it. You don't have to have a trailing uh, take profit. I would just, I'm just turning it on just for this bot. Safety orders. So again, this is a short bot, right? So you can go your if you watch your max safety order price deviation here, you can actually go above 100%. So if you're trying to come up with some kind of DCA, you know, essentially, if you're trying to come up with your own um, way of doing things, right? You could set something like this. So let's say you wanted to keep your max safety trades count at 30, which is kind of like what I do for like the long bots. Your price deviation to open safety orders, you could set this, you know, instead of using 2% or 1% or whatever it is that you're using, you could do 5%. And I'm not recommending this. I'm just saying like you can change this to be whatever you want, right? But if you look because this is a short bot and I told you earlier in the video that price can go up in like to infinity, right? It can go up as like, we don't know. And, and you can't really measure that. But to the downside, it's pretty easy, right? Price can only drop literally to zero, right? Price can lose 100%. It can't lose. It's impossible for you to lose 105% of something, right? If you're talking like strictly in those terms. So your max safety order price deviation could be above 100% for your short bots. So this is something to consider. Uh, maybe you have more active, maybe you do 50 safety trades and you do 3% as your price deviation. Again, you could do so many different things. I encourage you, like if you really want to, if you want to do this, to come up with your own kind of system that works for you, right? And that like you feel comfortable with. So, but again, two important things that I wanted to point out when you are creating a short bot is that you have to have the other side of the pair that we've talked about in previous videos. So for this instance, BTC, USDT, you need to have Bitcoin in your wallet to trade short. So that's essentially how, like what you need. You need Bitcoin instead of the USDT. And then your safety orders you can make this whatever you want and it can go above 100%. So you can account for price moving up, you know, as high as you like it, essentially. But that's this is something to point out that this is like a very important thing to play around with. And again, for, the, for most of you who are going to be using short bots, if I had to guess, you likely have your own strategy or you have your own indicators and you're probably going to be working with TradingView, implementing, you know, your your... You're going to be using trading view, sending the signals over to the three commas like we talked about in video seven. That's my guess. So you probably this probably isn't relevant to you. But for anybody who's trying to come up with a way to, you know, create a short DCA bot, 
this is, you know, this is very relevant to what you're going to be doing. And in advanced settings, again, I don't really, I don't deal with any of this stuff, but you certainly can. So I'm not going to create, if I clicked create this bot, which I guess I can click create, all you got to do is click start and you're good to go. So I'm not going to actually do this, but I just wanted to kind of walk you through this example of what that looks like. Okay. So you would just click start and it would start your bot. So I'm actually going to delete this just because I don't actually want this bot running, but I wanted to show you an example. So the creating the short bot, it was pretty self-explanatory, I'm guessing. So I didn't spend a whole lot of time on that, but I just wanted to highlight those two things that I talked about, right? So needing the Bitcoin pair or needing the Bitcoin to trade short. And then obviously that your settings can go, um, your, your, your safety order deviation can be above 150%, right? It can like the, the total safety order deviation. So now we're going to go on to the second part of the video which is trading with leverage. So this, and you see a little siren warning there. I like to have warnings on my videos, right? But this again is another one of those advanced, hopefully you have experience uh, because trading with leverage, obviously there's there's a significant amount of risk doing it. Um, but I, you know, I've had this question asked several times, so I definitely wanted to cover it for you guys. So first I wanted to give you kind of examples of leverage just so that you understand like how it works, okay? So you, a leverage trade example here, and here's kind of like the difference between levered and unlevered, right? And unlevered, you would say is like, it's, it's just, it's literally everything that I have talked about previous to this video is unlevered, okay? But suppose we have $8,000 and the last traded price of Bitcoin is $8,000, which by the way, thank you to Bybit for it, because I actually took this example from Bybit. It's nice, it's already typed out, saved me a lot of work. Um, but so again, suppose we have $8,000 and the last traded price of Bitcoin is $8,000. So if Bitcoin was to move up to $8,050 the next day, we have two options, right? And this is just showing you how it works. So if you are unlevered, you could literally buy one Bitcoin contract, buy one Bitcoin at $8,000. If price moves up to $8,050 the next day and you wanted to take profit, you can literally take your $50 gain by selling it at $8,050, right? Pretty self-explanatory. And obviously you don't talk about fees and all that stuff, but the levered example or using leverage, you could buy $80,000 worth of the contract at $8,000 and then sell it. Assuming price moves up to $8,050, right? Bitcoin price moves up to $8,050. Since you're trading with 10 X leverage, you're able to buy $80,000 worth of Bitcoin. And the gains are amplified by 10 times, right? So $500, you would have a $500 gain instead of a $50 gain because you're using 10x leverage. So the same example, right? This is leverage trade example number two. It's the same exact example, except this is talking about how losses happen. So if price moves down, Bitcoin goes down to $79.50 the next day. Here's what happens. So if you were to buy one Bitcoin contract at $8,000, one Bitcoin, and you lose... $50 by selling it at $79.50. Okay, so you bought it at Bitcoin for $8,000. Bitcoin dropped to $79.50 and you're like, oh my goodness, I need to cash out. I need to like, I need to cut my losses here. So you lose 50 bucks by selling it at $79.50. Now, if you were leveraged, right? And you bought $80,000 worth of Bitcoin and then you sold it, Bitcoin dropped to $79.50, right? Since you're trading with 10X leverage, the losses are actually amplified 10 times. So instead of losing $50, now you're losing $500. So that is essentially like in a very simple example, how leverage works. So moral of the story, leverage amplifies both your, your gains and your losses. And again, by 10 times, because you're using 10 X leverage, but on Bybit, you can get up to hundred X leverage, right? There's, there's several exchanges where you can trade hundred X leverage. So that just gives you an idea of what could potentially happen, right? Leverage is very powerful when it's used correctly, but when it goes against you, it can be a very big problem, right? So that's why I kind of have the caution sign up every time I talk about leverage. So real quick, brief overview of leverage trading bots, right? Like if you're gonna use leverage in your bots, so I just said it, it's powerful when it's used correctly, you can do very well. But it's also really dangerous if it's not used correctly or if your trades go against you because you can lose a lot more of your account quicker. Okay. 
So some things to pay attention to when you are considering using leverage with your trading bots. So on an exchange like Bybit, right? Market orders versus limit orders. So this is one of the settings that you have to select when you go to create your bot. So market versus limit orders on platforms like Bybit, you can actually get paid. You get a rebate to use limit orders. It's awesome. So if you use limit orders, Bybit pays you to be a market maker there essentially like they pay you to put your order in the books um and you can actually make money that way so make sure to check your exchange fees before trading so you understand what fees you're going to be paying now obviously in with bybit if you use market orders as part of your strategy then you could be paying like pretty significant amount of fees so definitely do your own research take it you know but take advantage of those types of situations and if you can use limit orders and it's part of your trading strategy, you can actually get compensated for using limit orders. So that's why I talk about it so much. But moving on to the funding rate. So what's the funding rate? Well, it's a mechanism that helps ensure the perpetual futures contract price stays close to the index price. So when the market is bullish, the funding rate tends to be positive. So when the, the, when the funding rate is positive, okay, longs are paying shorts. So if you are a short, since we're talking about earlier, we were talking about short bots, right? If you are in a short trade and the funding rate is positive, you are getting paid every single funding period, um, whatever the funding rate is. So you're actually making money that way. But when the market is bearish, the funding rate can be negative. So in the, using the same example, if you're short and the funding rate is negative, then you are paying longs to hold your position and vice versa. So to be clear, if you're bearish, I'm sorry. Well, if you're bearish, right? And you're, and you're taking a short trade. If the funding rate is positive, you're getting paid. If the funding rate is negative, you are paying longs, the other side of the trade. And just to go over it for those of you who are taking long positions, because we're in a very bullish market. So, if you're taking long positions, right, and the funding rate is positive, you are paying the shorts to hold your long position. If the funding rate was to turn negative, then you are getting paid holding your long position and you are being paid by the traders who are short. And again, so this is to keep the perpetual futures contract price as close to the index price as possible. Like they want to keep those two together. So that's how funding rates are actually set by the market. They change every um, X amount of hours on different exchanges. Usually it's eight hours, like on Bybit, every eight hours, you'll see the funding rate change or it'll, it'll be paid and then it'll move into the next, um, the next eight hour cycle. And then the funding rate will have changed. But if you're not sure what that is, please look into it because it's really important. And then you have your liquidation price. And your liquidation price is very simple. It's the price. So again, if you're leveraged, it's the price where your position is liquidated, which means you lose your position and you are sent an email. This is supposed to be funny, but it's actually not that funny when it happens. But basically you're sent an email telling you that you're wrecked, telling you that your position has been liquidated and you're, you've lost, you know, the, you've lost the funds that you put at risk in that position and hopefully you're not cross leverage which means that you're basically using your account balance to back your trade because that means you've lost basically all of your account so um leverage very important to understand you know the liquidation price is critical because that tells you when your trade is at risk right like what the price point and we'll go over this in an example but that'll tell you kind of like what, at what price is your trade at uh, like extreme risk. And then the funding rate, again, you know, you want to know if you're sitting in a position, are you going to be paying money to sit in that position? Are you going to be gaining money to sit in that position? And it will very likely influence your decision on whether or not that you're going to be taking that trade. And obviously it's likely to not influence you solely based on the funding rate, but it definitely is one of the factors that you you, you would probably consider um determining whether you want to be in that trade or not so that's likely one of the factors so now we are going to set up a trading bot using leverage and i actually created a brand new account just to use for this example and i'm actually going to 
Um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to use this example because I actually haven't like put too much thought into it, but I am going to use this account that you're going to see to actually use um, trading bots with leverage. And I've used it before on different exchanges. Um, I, I haven't done it in a while, but I wanted to start it up again. So I actually created an account just so that I could keep it just for the bot only. All right, so here we are back on three commas and we're going to click on create bot. And we're going to, for this example, use Bybit. And I actually created, again, I created a brand new exchange, I mean, a brand new account with Bybit just to do this um, for the trading bot. I'm going to change this. You can change this to whatever you want. Um, you can name it leverage, whatever, whatever you want to do, right? So the pairs on Bybit specifically, if you're trading the perpetuals, you can pick between these four things. So Bitcoin, EOS, Ethereum, or XRP. And all four of these are going to require you to have either Bitcoin, EOS, Ethereum, or XRP. So when you make your trades, you can actually, if you gain, right, if it's a profitable trade, you take profit in this particular coin. If it is a loss, you actually lose this coin. So it is all done that way. Um, obviously, you could trade against USDT on Bybit as well. But for this instance, we're just going to trade this. So your strategy is going to be long or I mean, it'd be long or short, whichever one you want. Um, but for, you know, I'm just going to leave it long for this the for this example. Now, your profit currency is you see how there's only quote and it's Bitcoin like there's no choice, right? So, you're, so that's what I mean by if you're trading in Bitcoin to to accrue more Bitcoin, essentially, or if you if you um, lose your trade, then you lose Bitcoin. So your base order size, you can do this two ways. Um, from my understanding, you can do this two ways. So either in Bitcoin like this, so you can measure it 0 0.003 Bitcoin um, and your safety order size could be like that or get rid of that or you can actually click BTC USD and then and you see your base or your minimum order size is actually pretty small. Um, so for smaller accounts, you know, again, buy bit, this could work out. But for your base order size, you could just do your standard, you know, 10 and 20 or whatever you wanted to do. But there's two different ways that you could do it for um, buy bit in particular um, on three commas. And your start order type, market or limit, again, limit, you get paid to use limit orders on buy bit. So I strongly recommend using limit unless it, part of your strategy is to use market orders for whichever reason. And then your leverage type. So this is where it gets interesting. You click on it. Cross means you're using your entire account balance to back your trade. Uh, just do your own research on that. Please make sure you understand what that means. And then custom is where you can actually specify which leverage you want to use, right? So this is a really important part. Again, like you need to understand how leverage works and what types of leverage, you know, how, how much leverage do you want to use? For this example, I'm probably going to keep it small. You know, I, I mean, it's funny that 3x is small. It's actually not that small, but it's not 100x or anything crazy, right? You're certainly welcome to play around with this. Um, and you notice that it only goes up in certain in steps, right? Two, three, five, skips to 25, 50, 75. So what happens if you want to use something, a different leverage amount that's not listed? Well, this is where you click the keyboard and then you could type in 10, for example and it will change it to 10x, or if you want to use 70x, very specific, right? Then you could you see it adjust to 70x. So you can adjust your leverage however you would like. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use three. And again, I'm not actually going to create this bot. I am happy to share, you know, once I actually do create the, the actual Bitcoin bot for Bybit that I'm going to be using, I'm happy to share those settings if people are interested. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you how the interface looks when you're trying to set up a bot that you're going to be using leverage on. And your deal start condition, I always use open new trade ASAP. It's the same. But again, trading view custom signal for those of you who watch video seven, if you would like to use that, you certainly can. And I showed you how to connect trading view to three commas. But we'll just keep it or well, there's your trading view signals. You can use these as well. But again, open new trade ASAP, typically what I use. And this, 
I'll just go through the motions, but this is, you know, this, this is completely up to you. And as far as this particular Bitcoin bot goes, I don't actually know what my orders are going to be or what my um, safety orders and all that are going to be quite yet. But we'll just use the same standard ones that I've used in every other video that I've done so far. So 30 max safety trades, um, 2% deviation, safety order volume scale, 1.05. And I don't mess with any of this stuff. So that, um, if you move up to over here again, you see the balance, 0 0.1. That's about $5,600 or so in Bitcoin that I transferred over to Bybit. I, I did transfer 0 0.1, but I actually got a little bonus for Bybit. It was like $55 or something for signing up for a new account. And if you're interested, uh, there'll be a link in the description below if you are interested in joining Bybit. And um, so your max amount for your bot usage, this, measure, this is measured in Bitcoin. Your max safety order price deviation, again, this is the same as all my previous videos, I'm not saying I'm using this particular one, but it would be 60%. And then the percent of available balance to be used by the bot. So if all 30 safety orders filled, your base order and your 30 safety orders filled, I would use 5.02% 5 of my available balance. So that just tells you what that, what that looks like. And then what you can do too, is you can actually come over to chart and I wish I had went over this in a pre, you know, in like video one, honestly. Um, but chart, it kind of shows you that as the steps go up, what, how much money are you using on your bot? So this is pretty neat. And it starts at zero, and then obviously at thirty steps, you know, you would be using zero point zero one five Bitcoin, or in USDT value, would be about eight hundred and forty three dollars. And then this is your steps down here, showing you the size increase of your safety orders as your say as your steps increase right so because you have 1.05 you have a five percent increase on every single step that's what this is showing you here so if you wanted to change this value then you could see here if you if you watch if i change to like 1.2 you see how it changes right which is crazy i mean 1.2 is pretty steep that would cost you quite a bit if you have this many safety trades and then the table, this brings up some interesting information too. So you have your base order and all 30 safety orders. It shows you your deviation percentage. So again, if you hit all 30 safety orders, you're at 60% deviation. Um, it tells you your total, so your total size right here, which this is pretty important information to calculate your liquidation point. Um, so size, and this is like assuming you wanted to do that, which you probably would. But if all your safety orders filled, then you would have 1,354 um, contracts as your size. So using this particular settings that I have. And again, these are going to change based on the settings that you use. So now I'm going to take you over to the Bybit interface and show you what that looks like just very quickly and to show you like how you would find your liquidation price. Okay, so here is Bybit. This is what it looks like. This is the Bybit interface, and you can see we're trading BTC USD, inverse perpetual, and these are the other inverse perpetual options that Bybit currently has. You can trade USDT perpetual. So if you want to transfer USDT to Bybit to trade and use that, you certainly can. And you can also trade Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Tezos, and Link, Cardano. Polkadot, Uniswap, so you can trade all of these things on USDT inverse perpetual as well. And there are inverse features. These are new. These are relatively new. But you can trade any of these on Bybit. So like using your three commas account. So you can set up a bot for any of the or any of these ones, which is pretty neat. But Going over a couple important pieces of information that I see. So again, you see my total equity here, 0.1. So it's the same exact account that I set up for um, just for this particular trading bot that I wanted to wanted to do. But um, this is my starting funds here. So, you know, assuming that I, I keep this account and I use it strictly for trading bots, which I'm really, I, that's the plan. I'm hoping to do that. Um, then we can see kind of how my account balance progresses over time, which would be pretty awesome. Um, hopefully awesome anyway. <laughs> and then uh, some important pieces of information from previous, um, previous in the video. 
your funding rate. So you see your funding rate up here. And if you actually highlight it with the mouse, it shows you the predicted funding rate for the next uh, funding rate cycle. Okay. So the current funding rate is 0.0357%. So essentially, if you are long right now and you're holding a long position in one hour and 19 minutes, you see this countdown right here. In one hour and 19 minutes, you are going to pay this funding rate to shorts. So that's how that works because it's a positive number, okay? Now, let's say that there was a, a minus sign in front of the zero and it was a negative funding rate, then if you were a short, then you would be getting paid by, I'm sorry, if you were long, then you would be getting paid by the short. So it would be in reverse. But again, as it stands, 0.0357%, that is what longs will be paying shorts in one hour and 19 minutes and 13 seconds. And then if you click, or if you just highlight, move your mouse over, you can see what the next funding rate countdown looks like. And it's looking like it's gonna be even higher than the current funding rate. So just to give you an idea. So obviously like if you see funding rate and it's 0 0.3 or something crazy like that, that's kind of where I go back, um, you know, in, in the, the previous portion of this video, when I talk about short bots, and if there was like funding rate that you could maybe, you know, take advantage of if there was incredibly high funding on something. Again, I'm not saying that I would ever just start a short bot because something has incredibly high funding, but it, it could be, you know, if it aligns with your analysis or whatever other reasons you have, then, you know, that's something that you could take into account, right? Because if you're in a short position, you're going to get paid that funding, assuming that happens. So that's the funding rate. And then over here, you know, again, this is all going to be done via three commas, so you don't have to worry about this stuff. But eventually I am going to do a Bybit video um, to actually show you like the whole site and actually do some trading on Bybit. And um, but for now, I'm not really going to go over all this stuff because this is all the things that you said over on three commas that we talked about. So one thing, very important thing, by the way, is you can come over to Bybit and you can use your calculator right here. Let me highlight it. So this is your calculator and you can find your liquidation price, approximate liquidation price. So this is pretty neat. So let's say for the, the trading bot example that I'm using, right? We're using 3X leverage. So the quantity, you can put whatever it is, right? Let's just say we're 1500. Your entry price, now your entry price, you need to find your average entry. So that's one thing that you do need to find. And I don't think that it's on over in three commas. It was like some weird, like it didn't really match up when you looked at the chart. But if you, you find a, your approximate entry price, which would be, you know, and this is like, if you're, you have to think about your system, right? So for me, if I'm trying to set up a DCA bot and I have my 30 safety orders and I have to take all of that into account to find my liquidation price, right? So let's say, and I'm just gonna use this as an example. Let's say I started filling my orders here and price dropped down, you know, to whatever. And let's say that my average entry was, let's say $50,000, okay? So, Oh, new subscriber. Thank you. Um, that's what that noise was, by the way. And then, um, so your leverage is 3x. Your quantity, it can be whatever it is. And your entry price, I have to mute this. I can tell. Just give me one second. There we go. And then, um, so again, sorry about that. So your leverage is 3x. Your quantity is 50, you know, it's whatever your order size is. And your entry price, this is going to be like your average entry. So you're going to have to guess what your average entry is, right? So your liquidation price is right here, $37,641. So this is the point at which your liquidation price would kick in and it will liquidate your position, okay? So one thing that you need to be aware of though, and this is why I say try to find what your average entry would be assuming all of your safety orders filled if that's what the type of bot that you were building is because as your safety orders fill, so your liquidation price is gonna be different, right? So let's say that your entry price we entered right now. So I'm gonna try to do it, 55,360. That's what price is right now. So your liquidation price would be 41,676. 
but as your average entry drops so let's take a thousand dollars off of this so you drop this so your average entry becomes fifty four thousand dollars you can see your liquidation price also drops so as your orders are being filled your liquidation price will continue to lower as well because your average entry lowers so again try to find what your average entry is if you're coming up with a new bot strategy right Try to find out what your average entry is if in case all your safety orders fill that way you know about where your liquidation price would be and that's how you could kind of base your strategy off of okay so for this instance you know my liquidation price let's say that my average entry and again you know because like if i'm doing um 30 safety orders at two percent that's 60 percent. so my my average entry could be way lower it'll be way lower than fifty four thousand dollars assuming all 30 orders filled so let's say you know my average entry is going to be thirty-five thousand dollars. i don't know i'm just making this up but anyways you can see it changes your liquidation price but this is this is a number that you want to make sure that you're aware of and another thing is if you wanted to get real crazy and change your leverage to like let's say 100x so this is a hundred X leverage and let's use the exact price it is now 55, four, four, seven. So if you entered here, right here, where we're currently sitting and you're using hundred X leverage, you will be liquidated. If price moves down $300, a little over 300 bucks, just to give you an idea. So that's like how crazy the window is, right? So when you're using hundred X leverage, if price moves higher, if price moves in your favor, then you know you you could be doing very well but if price goes against you even slightly which this like this is crazy 100x level just is absolutely crazy but if it, if price goes against you and this could very easily drop to 55 171 in a matter of a minute or or 10 seconds i mean i've seen it happen plenty of times so this is just something to keep in mind mind your leverage like be careful how much you're using and obviously the more leverage you're using um, I would reserve that for kind of the more experienced traders. So we're back on three commas. And there's just one thing that I wanted to point out before I actually like finish this bot out is your max ac active safety trades count. It's I always usually set it at one, but on leveraged exchanges, like when I'm trading with leverage and price can move really drastically sometimes, I you could maybe want to set a couple extra active safety trades that way like they're in the books in case like you get you know like when bitmex was around and like they were the, they were the king exchange to be on they had insane moves and like for anybody who was trading during that time like bitmex was like it was crazy and he'd have you know crazy liquidation runs and there'd be server you know that you couldn't get a trade in even if you wanted to and you know unless you had orders already waiting in the books which you may or may not want have wanted that to happen like you were you know there was the the server the bot overload the server overload you couldn't get an order in so you know if you wanted to have more than one active safety trade you could and you can change this to whatever you want the only caution that i would say is like well some people say well why don't you just put 30 in there well the thing is when you you know if your bot finishes its deal and then it has to cancel a bunch of safety orders i know that like on some exchanges they'll they'll they will like flag your account because it seems like you're spamming right so they, that's actually not a good thing it's not recommended to have too many active safety trades but if you wanted to have more than one I think you're fine and like the most i would probably go up to is maybe like five because again, every time your, your your bot closes a deal, it has to cancel all the other orders, right? So kind of like when you're canceling orders and if it's like a ton of orders, it could cause, you know, it could flag your account. So just wanted to throw that out there. But if we're happy with the settings that we see, you know, if you're happy with everything, 3X leverage, custom, open new trade, you know, I'm actually gonna change this because I don't want it to, or do I? I'm just going to put trading view custom signal just so that it doesn't start a deal yet because I am going to come back and edit all of this later, like later on once I have time to figure out exactly what I want to do. But when you're done and you're happy with your settings, you click create bot. Bot successfully saved, start bot, you click start and your bot's turned on.
and then it will go and show you your um, all of your settings again. And that's it. So like this is how you set up a leverage trading bot. Really, the only difference again is there's like a few, you know, depends what exchange you're trading on. And really, again, the leverage is important. And that's kind of what you're going to need to understand. Like you're going to need to know about where your liquidation point is. Like I had demonstrated earlier, kind of how to find that. Um, you need to find like your average entry and plug that into the calculator and see where your liquidation point is. That way you're aware of it. But for the most part, this is how you set up a trading bot for uh, using leverage and you incorporate that into your three commas bots. So I changed my mind. I came back and I actually edited my settings just so that I could make sure to show you how it works. <laughs> So I changed my take profit to 0.2%. That way I can hopefully get out of this deal quickly. But I ended up changing my take profit and I switched it to an open new trade ASAP. So this actually shows you that the bot, it works. It has two active orders. It's set up exactly how you saw it in the video or in the, the previous slide, I guess you could say the previous segment. Um, if you go over to Bybit, you can see that it's actually populated so here's your position on bybit and this was all done via api like three commas did this all for me so the contracts of so bitcoin usd isolated leverage 3x just like we said in the bot the quantity is 10 just like we said in the bot here's your value your entry price i got in at 55 401 and i'm currently underwater <laughs> and there's your liquidation price so this is what you want to pay attention to but again as my orders fill, okay, my safety orders fill, the liquidation, uh, the, the liquidation price will drop as well, and it will move down with my safety orders. So I'm not that worried about it. Honestly, this is such a small, this is like a tiny, tiny, tiny position. I don't really care. And when I'm done with this video, I will probably just close the trade and, um, you know, do the actual settings that I want to. And again, if you're interested in, the, in that or you're curious what I'm doing, I'm happy to share it once I end up doing it. But I just wanted to show you, we literally set up the bottom three commas. We put in the leverage we wanted. We put in the settings that we wanted. And then we came over to Bybit and it got me in the trade. And this is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on Bybit's end. And you see the total equity available balance now broke below 0 0.1. Because that's, I have my active orders in here. And um, so you can see like I'm buying, these are my next two safe or these are my two safety orders that i have that are waiting to be filled these are their order prices that it's waiting to be filled at and then this red order down here is my take profit order for my long position so this is selling my 10 contracts that i currently have at this is my take profit price fifty five thousand five ninety seven. so if price moves up um another 200 bucks then i will get out of my trade and then start a new one so that's your active orders that you have open here. Again, here's your position, liquidation price, so on and so forth. But um, this is the very first trade on this account. So um, I will be hopefully sometime this week, I should have the bot actually running with the settings that I want it to, to be running at. And if you're curious, again, I'm happy to share those with you. But I just want to show you over in Bybit what it looks like on Bybit's end. So advanced trading tutorials that are coming out soon, composite bots, grid bots. Those are two future videos that I have in the works um, for advanced strategy. So changes in macro market structure. You know, I kind of covered that today to a day, like very, it was like very intro. Um, but one of the things that I do want to cover again is when, you know, when, when the market changes on the, uh, on, in the big picture, right? And we look like we could be actually changing from a bull market, possibly shifting into a bear market, right? Like that's a video sometime in the future, whenever that happens, hopefully it's a long ways away. But whenever that does happen, and I think it's time, then I will do a video specifically how I myself am preparing for what I think could be that change, if that makes sense. And how the type of changes that I would look to uh make to my trading bots to make sure that they have the best chance for success in my you know as far as like what i think is is the best chance 
And then, you know, again, sharing what I'm doing in real time whenever that happens in case anybody is interested. And number three, so the new role, again, I talked about Legends a little bit in the, in the past couple of videos. Still kind of working on that, but I do have a new, that new role coming soon and it's going to be awesome. So definitely stay tuned for that. You will definitely want to be one, but um, that is coming very, very soon. And one last thing that I kind of talked to some members about in my live stream that I did today. That's one really important thing when you're, when you're, when you're, you know, in any kind of trading, but definitely with trading bots as well, it's no different. If you are well into profit by now, which I know quite a few people are, I've seen some people that are up thousands of dollars, like since the trading bot series started literally a month ago and people are doing really well. The thing that I want to remind you of is why you're doing this to begin with, right? So if you're in it to, you know, increase your trading bot capital and you want to keep kind of reinvesting those profits into your trading bots, then that's, you know, that's your goal. Keep at it. If, you know, if you've made, if, if it's a lot of money to you, what you've made so far, it can't hurt to take some profit. And that's kind of what I wanted to say. Like if you're up big, you know, Definitely at least pay yourself, realize some of the gains, like make sure that it's real to you. You actually are profiting, right? Send it to your bank account, buy something with it or do whatever you want, right? But the point is we're all in this game for one reason and that's to make money. It's to make profits, right? But profits are not profits until you realize them, okay? Especially for those of you who are like me and you're taking all your profit in crypto, right? That's risky in itself. You know, when you have the kind of market that we have now, to me, it makes sense. That's why I do it. But for example, the market has a huge correction, right? I, my, my, my portfolio value could take a hit. It's kind of my point. So like if you're up big, you know, I'm up $55,000 in profit or whatever. If, it, if that's a lot of money to you, don't forget to take some off the table. It's kind of my point, right? Like definitely pay yourself, realize some profits and then keep at it. And then the last slide, my social, obviously this is video eight by now. You probably know how to get in touch with me, but um, you know, you're watching this on YouTube. So, you know, my YouTube channel and the two channels that are really growing quite a bit is discord. I think we're up to, we're over 650 deep now in discord. So shout out to everybody there. And in telegram i think we're over 300 in telegram and actually look really fast 328 members yeah so we're at 328 members in telegram but anyway really good trading bot community really great community overall um definitely join Dis uh, discord if you're interested in technical analysis because that's where i share all of my technical analysis but that being said hope you learned something hope you enjoyed the video if you have questions feel free to join discord join telegram there's a whole you know we're a thousand there are a thousand members between telegram and discord so there's a lot of people that are doing exactly what you're looking to do or are currently doing so come in there hang out with us and have a good time but that being said have a great night trade safe out there